Hello, it's Tom from Freemind here, and today I wanted to share with you the magical power of gratitude. Now, gratitude helps you to have a better life. It helps you to change your perspective and feel uh, at peace with who you are and where you are, no matter what's going on. But this story is a little different. This is about a miracle I experienced because of the power of gratitude. So we have to go back about seven years. I just separated from my wife. It was a really, really difficult time. My daughter was really young. Um, she was one and a half. I'd had to leave my beautiful home in Highgate. I was living in a crappy little bed set. Everything was difficult emotionally, financially. It was a really, really difficult time and I was not feeling uh, grateful. I was mainly feeling afraid and frustrated and angry and sad. And um, and I remember getting a call from my ex on a Wednesday and she'd been driving the car and it had broken down while she was driving it and um, she'd been on her way to a meeting in Kentish Town in North London and uh, she the power steering had failed and she'd... Uh, she, I mean, she struggled to park it. Someone had to help her park the car and she had to go on to her meeting and I need, we both had keys. I had to go down there and sort it out. And I was busy, you know. Not only was I busy, but I really couldn't afford a problem with the car. I also really wanted the car. I booked it for a Friday night. My friend was having a party and I was like, oh man, it was out of town and the pain to get to without a car. And I was like... I was so busy that day as well. The last thing I wanted to do was kind of schlep down to Kentish Town and sort it out. But I did, and sure enough, yeah, I couldn't, I could, I couldn't, I couldn't really steer the car. I should have probably called the, the roadside assistance people. But I had noticed there was a garage just around the corner, and so I managed to wrestle. I mean, like turning a corner was almost impossible to wrestle it around the corner to this garage, and uh, he, he, he. Uh, he had the availability to work on the car and so I left it with him and but you know this was not a recommended person right so that was a bit nerve-wracking and and it didn't feel like it was going to be a cheap thing to fix anyway so this was the Wednesday I called him the next day hoping he'd get it fixed on the Thursday he's like no I'm waiting for some parts and he said it could be you know between 400 could be a thousand it's like oh man that was that was not money that I could afford to spend on on fixing a car at that moment and um and it was also not a guarantee he was going to have it done by the Friday, but he hoped. He said, you know, call him at midday on Friday and he'd let me know. I was like, oh, man. And I was angry about the whole thing and the whole the whole situation. Fortunately, I called him on the Friday and he'd managed to sort the part. He'd managed to sort the problem. He was just finalising it. It wasn't ready yet, but it would be ready by the end of the day. He asked me to come down at kind of four o'clock. Um, um, you know, it wouldn't be done until four. Anyway... The garage shut at five, I checked with him. So I decided to, get, and it was gonna be something like, yes, yeah, 600 pounds. So it could have been worse, but certainly could have been better. And it was, you know, hard. Anyway, so I get um, on my way to Kentish Town. And when I came up the escalator, and I was pleased because I figured I could pick it up the car and I could just go straight to the party. And so, you know, at least I wasn't missing the party. So, but when I came up the escalator, it was, it was, it was, this is like a summer's day, but it was dark. And I was like, what is going on? And the other side of the ticket barrier, there was quite a few people crowding. I was like, and when I got close to the ticket barrier, I could see, and I came through the ticket barrier and I was like, oh man, it was like the sky was black. It was a full on British summer thunderstorm. And it was, uh, the whole sky was dark and it was raining, that kind of rain that if you go into it, you're like soaked within like 20 seconds. And as, as I came through the barrier, this, this, this girl who was leaning against the back wall, obviously waiting for the rain to stop before she went on to her next destination, kind of caught my eye and we laughed because it was like, ah, oh, you're kidding, you know? So she was kept watching people, you know, see what was going on, finding it funny. But the truth was, I... I might have, you know, laughed with her, but internally, this was the last flipping straw. And I lost it internally. That was it. I was so angry and so frustrated and all of my upsets about my life and everything I was annoyed about with my ex and with where I was and how life was and the whole thing. And I, I properly doomed out. I, I doomed out 
in ways that I don't usually allow myself to. I certainly didn't then. And it was really painful. But it was so profound, so extreme. I was like, it was like I felt like I was cursed in that moment. And I caught myself, thankfully. And I was like, you know better than this. You know better than this. This state will curse your life. You will, this is the worst way to walk through life. You've got to sort this out. You've got to sort this out. It's not that bad. Stop it. Stop counting your curses. Start counting your blessings. So I knew what to do. I knew, okay, I now have to change my physiological state first. So I closed my eyes. I put my head back. I put my chin up. I looked up to the sky slightly. I put my shoulders back. I kind of, yeah, my legs were planted wide. You know, I started breathing deeply. And I just chose to look for the blessing. I chose to look for the blessing. And then, you know, it was almost... It was almost immediate that I realized how blinkered I had been. So let's, I mean, the car broke down. The steering on my car broke down whilst my ex was driving it. And she hadn't had an accident. That is amazing. I mean, I, I, you know, we weren't meant to be together, but I still loved her. I don't want anything bad to happen. So that could have been a nightmare. My daughter could have been in the car. Even if there wasn't an accident, that would have been really scary for both of them. I mean, it was scary for my ex, but she, she broke down when she'd got to her destination which is a miracle. Not only that, this is North London, where she had broken down, there was a parking space that she was allowed to park in. And there was a man there that saw she was in distress and offered to park it for her. He wrestled it into the parking space. When I'd gone to pick it up, there was a garage round the corner that was a specialist in fixing my kind of car. And it was it was one or two turn. I had to take two corners to get it into the garage. That that is a miracle and I, so suddenly I, I was in again and I was feeling the connection to the universe and I was feeling connection to me and I, I felt almost ashamed of how much I've been dooming out and I felt grateful my daughter was safe and my ex was safe and I started to really feel it and I started to feel good and I started to feel like you know what this was a wake-up call for this whole period that I was being you know you know sad about I don't mean I should deny your sad feelings but I was I was not helping the situation with by resisting it and this car situation kind of represented it. But I was, with all of this said, I was starting to feel better. But then I was still a part of me. It's like, I've got to go to this party. I've got dressed in what I'm wearing for the party. And I was like, like it was, I got down there about half four. So I had plenty of time. It was like a 10 minute walk to his garage. He closed at five. But I didn't want to walk out in the wet. And it looked, this was not going to let up. It was a full on storm. It was ridiculous. But I was feeling a bit better, but I didn't want to get wet. So what I noticed, what started growing inside me was this kind of miracle state, belief, positivity going on. I was like, you are going to be fine. You are not going to get wet. And I was like, oh, maybe I could like, you know, with the power of my mind and my gratitude, I could like, you know, like the like Moses, the sea will part and the rain will stop and the sunlight will come out and I will walk out. And I was like, right, well, you've got like... I don't know however long left now, 10 minutes or whatever, before you've got to leave to get to the garage on time. Like, just keep working this gratitude, you know? And, you know, one, it doesn't matter. Ultimately, we're, we're waterproof under our clothes, right? So it's like, it doesn't matter. Just get comfortable with it, no matter what. Let go of not needing to be dry at the party and just, just, and I was caught by the idea. I was like, you know what? Come what may, I'm going to do my best to be as positive and as grateful as I can be. And then when I need to leave, like at 10 2, just before 10 2, I am going to bowl out of here. And I was set about three or four meters back from the exit. And there was a line of, I don't know, 20, 30 people vying to get out. But what, you know, waiting for the rain to stop. And so I did. I went in deep and I just counted and I gave thanks for all of these blessings. And I just filled myself with a sense of gratitude and a sense of being alive and that everything was okay ultimately and everything's working out fine. And yet this idea just kept being there and I kept trying to push it away because I didn't want to be attached to outcome. I didn't want to be attached to the idea of it not raining because one, it really didn't look like it was going to stop. But I had made this commitment and sure enough, it was just before 10 to, and I knew I had to go. I knew the timings and I just, I opened my eyes and I'd almost started marching before I opened my eyes. So I'm literally, I'm like swinging my arms up and I'm, you know, and it's only going to take a couple of seconds at that pace. I'm just, I open my eyes, I start walking and I'd love to tell you the rain stopped. I'd love to tell you that the sun had come out, but if anything, it got worse. It was like, it was proper, like crazy bucket rain, you know, 
But fine, I was committed, I was doing it, and I was bowling out, and I just was proud of myself for turning my attitude around, and it was inspiring me for this whole divorce thing, and I was like, I'm doing it, and doing it, and just as I was about to walk out into the rain, I just, I just didn't want to be wet, I didn't want to be flipping wet at the party, and I, st I didn't stop, but I slowed, it was imperceivable, it was subtle, but I, it was enough, so my arm like swung up quite high, because I'd been marching, and I kind of paused, and my arm swung up, and in that microsecond where I stopped, oh my god, I, I don't know, I was so quick to call myself a fraud, and I, you know, let myself down, because I'd made this commitment to walk out, and to take this, you know, and the part of me goes, it's only water, what a lot of fuss about getting caught in the rain. I know, but it was real, it was happening. But I kid you not, at that exact moment, there was a guy walking up the street. And he had an umbrella, but it was broken. It was broken because the rain was so ferocious, it snapped one of the arms. But whilst he didn't want to keep it, it still worked. He was dry underneath, <coughs> but he no longer wanted it. At that point, he walked up to the, where I was exiting, a row of at least 20 or 30 people. And he said, does anyone want this? And he held it up. But the point at which I walked out, everyone was still, but I was moving. And even though I'd slowed because of my moment of anxiety, I was still coming out. And as I come up, my arm swung up at exactly the right moment. And the distance between his hand and the umbrella and my hand and the umbrella was about an inch. And it was like he handed it to me. And I said, oh, me, thank you. And I was gone and away and walking down the street. An absolute miracle. I was going to be dry. The rain was worse than ever. And I had learnt the most amazing lesson about counting my blessings. But, you know what? I don't think it was even necessarily just about me. Because I can't help thinking about that woman that, that I made eye contact with. And we had a laugh that was raining. I, I knew whilst I was doing that thing, when I closed my eyes and I did that, she was watching. I'm going, what the hell is he doing, right? Like, like. I mean, it must have looked like I was praying or something. I mean, I don't consider this prayer, but it's like, it's, but it looked that way, right? And I was definitely about getting to alignment. All she saw was this guy come up, see that the rain was raining really bad. And then he took some time, 10, 15 minutes to do some kind of crazy thing. And then he marched out and it was like, and someone handed me an umbrella at the exact moment that I needed it. I just, I would, you know, I think for her, that just, you know, she must have been mad for her to witness that. But I was too busy walking down the road and I was in tears. But you know, the main reason I was in tears was not, was not because I'd been given this umbrella and it was not because I, you know, just, and I wasn't going to be wet at the party. The main reason I cried was because in that moment when I paused, when I felt anxious, when I didn't want to be wet, I was so quick to be mean and to call myself a failure or to call myself a fraud because I'd made that commitment to, to just do it anyway and then it came to it, I was scared. But in that moment, in that slight pause, if I hadn't have paused, I would have walked past the guy, I would have left too soon. And he, he, I would have been some distance from the umbrella. It was because I stopped that my hand swung up to where it was. That anxiety, that pause, that was everything required to mean I was in the right place at the right time, even though I didn't think it. And I was so ready to be hard on myself for not being ready. That that was actually me being perfectly ready. And so I leave with you this realisation that don't, don't just stop counting your curses and start counting your blessings, but also trust if you don't feel like counting your blessings, if you feel anxious one day, these, this, the gratitude state is inclusive of that. It's not put a smile on your face and deny all negativity. It's like open your heart to all of it and trust there is divine timing. There are seeds caught in wintry frozen ground with self-esteem issues imagining that they're not shooting or growing or coming into bloom or blossom like their friends are or like their friends have last season or it's like you know what there needs to be the right um, conditions there needs to be the right amount of water the right temperature otherwise your green shoot will come up into frozen ground and you won't survive there's a timing there's a seasonality you are where you're supposed to be. And instead of bemoaning what is and what isn't happening, to trust completely, to trust and to be grateful. And so with that, I hope you just have an amazing day, an amazing life. Count your blessings and open to the magic of this connected universe. And it, it, I mean, it's got, it's got a crazy sense of humor at the very least. So wishing you uh, the very best.